Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss the following paper. Man is to compute a programmer as woman is to homemaker. Debiasing word embeddings. This is a very popular NIPS 2016 paper by Tolga Bolukbasi et al. So let's look at this uh, summary of this paper first. Blind application of machine learning models could amplify inherent biases in data. For instance, embeddings like word to vec could exhibit strong biases like gender bias, which when used in downstream applications could lead to unintended consequences. Gender bias can be captured by direction of the embedding is what the authors claim and we'll see that more in later slides. And a method to remove gender stereotypes from word embeddings is proposed by the authors. Let's see. Let's recap what word embeddings are. So word embeddings are a way to represent a word as a vector which can be fed to downstream applications like a machine learning model, like a classifier, or uh, it can be used for semantic similarity and many other applications. A popular set of pre-trained embeddings are the Google uh, News, those trained from Google News dataset uh, with word to vec uh, Another popular set of embeddings are the glove embeddings. So the properties of these embeddings usually are that vectors of similar words are closed geometrically in the same direction and vector arithmetic to capture relationship between words. So what we mean by this is man minus woman will be geometrically close to king minus queen. Similarly, you can use it for analogy tasks such as Paris to France is Tokyo to what? And the answer could be Japan, where it is automatically finding the capital relationship. But there are also some unintended things that come out in these embeddings like gender stereotypes. For instance, man minus woman is also similar to computer programmer minus homemaker. This is not an intended consequence because this means that a computer programmer is being associated with a man and a homemaker with a woman, which is gender stereotyping. Similarly, she to suing is similar to he to carpentry. This is another example of an analogy that is gender stereotyped. Uh, another example could be like uh, pink to woman, uh, pink to girl as blue to boy perhaps in some countries. So here uh, are a bunch of different gender stereotypes that were found from embeddings based on experiments by the authors. So some examples notable are housewife to shopkeeper as she to he, right? Similarly, she to he as softball to baseball. Now, uh, Softball is not necessarily a gender specific word, right? But, and however, we can see the gender stereotyping here where softball is associated with women while baseball with men. So to put this in context, here are some gender appropriate analogies. She to he to mother to father or she to he to sister to brother. So these are gender appropriate because sister, brother, mother, father are gender specific words. So the idea is we do want to have these gender appropriate analogies, but we don't want the gender stereotyped analogies on the top where a shopkeeper, for instance, should not be related to a male, right? It could be a female as well. So how do they do this? And what happens if they don't do it, right? So uh, if we do not debias embedding, suppose we have an application where we are searching for CMU computer science PhD student profile, we might end up with more male profiles than female profiles because you might have a relationship like John to computer programmer as you know, Mary to homemaker, where names of male students are more associated with computer programming than female students maybe, right? So we want to try to fix these biases. How? So the goal is twofold, reduce bias, to ensure that you know general neutral words such as nurse or or uh, shopkeeper are equidistant between gender pairs such as he and she but we also want to maintain embedding utility so maintain meaningful non gender related relationships between gender neutral words we don't want to lose that so that we can use the embeddings in different applications but how do they do it the first step is to identify a gender subspace in order to do this they find a set of uh, gender specific pairs, for instance, she, he, her, his, woman, man, and so on, and take the difference, she minus he, daughter minus son, and so on. 
and uh, they take all these different vectors and do PCA on top of this and they find that the top few eigenvectors could constitute the gender subspace. In the space of gender bias, so th this could be used for other uh, kinds of biases like racial bias or age bias and so on. In the case of gender bias, they find that the top eigenvalue is significantly higher than other eigenvalues which means you can think of it as a gender direction in this case instead of a gender subspace right in the more general case though it's subspace so now that uh, we have to find a general sub gender subspace how do you identify whether a data uh, a set of embeddings are biased so they define two kinds of biases the direct bias and the indirect bias the direct bias can be found by projecting a word directly onto the gender subspace. So they derive a metric which is projecting each of the gender neutral words, words that are not gender specific onto the gender subspace and finding uh, you know, how much weightage they have. So this metric direct bias is de derived from that. They talk about an indirect bias where for instance a waitress is closer to softball than football while a businessman is closer to football now we note here that softball and football are not gender specific words and hence we are calling this indirect bias so to measure indirect bias they take pairs of words and see what happens when they find the dot product of these words and of the embeddings for these words and then they remove the gender subspace from these words and then take the dot product again and see how they differ. So that's a measure they use for identifying indirect bias. Now that you identify that a set of embeddings are biased, how do you de-bias them? They have two strategies for this. One is neutralize, that is remove component along gender subspace, which means gender neutral words are zero in gender subspace. The second strategy is to equalize, which is any gender neutral word is equidistant from pairs of gender specific words. For instance, they come up with a class of gender specific words. So for a particular bias, uh, if you're taking gender, they come up with a class of uh, word pairs. For instance, grandmother, grandfather, girl, guy, she, he, uh, and woman, man, and so on. And if you take a word like babysitter, it needs to be equidistant from each word in this pair. For instance, babysitter needs to be equidistant from grandmother as grandfather. Similarly, it needs to be equidistant from girl as guy, right? So this is equalizing. So this was a review of the paper on debiasing word embeddings. Once again, this is a very popular paper and it's uh, not uh, very hard to actually implement as well. So I would definitely encourage you to go and take a look at this if you like this topic. Thank you.